This is Echo 3, and by request, let's discuss gravity assists. These can also be called gravitational slingshots or swing bys. Using the relative motion of another planetary body, we can alter the direction of our craft and save fuel. Gravity assists are common in aerospace programs. The Voyager probes used Jupiter and Saturn to assist in getting to their destinations. More recently, the Solar Orbiter was launched and is using gravity assists from Earth and Venus to alter its orbit, specifically its inclination, so that they can better observe the Sun's poles. Let's take a basic look at how you can use gravity assist in the game to your advantage. Here we have a small craft in orbit around Kerbin. We can make a maneuver that takes the craft out to the same orbital height as the Mun. If the craft never encounters the Mun, it will stay in this orbit. If we set up an encounter, we can see how the Mun's gravity will affect the path of the craft. If we approach the Mun from the back side of its orbit, the Mun will pull on the craft and accelerate the craft relative to the Kerbin. In real life, both objects would technically interact with each other so that the moon would slow down a little and the craft would speed up, although the effect on the moon would be so negligible that, like the game, you would not even calculate its change. In our case, the 845 meter per second burn from low Kerbin orbit is enough to eject us from the planet's sphere of influence because swinging by the Mun accelerated us to escape velocity. Properly setting up a Mun gravity assist to eject from Kerbin can save your missions over 200 meters per second of delta V if you do it properly. Next, we will change the timing of our burn so that we will encounter the Mun on the front side of its orbit around Kerbin. This has the opposite effect. Instead of ejecting from Kerbin's sphere of influence, we will be on a return trajectory back to landing on Kerbin. This is called a free return trajectory, and the Apollo missions took advantage of this. That way, if there was ever a problem, we're looking at you number 13, the craft would naturally be headed back to Earth. Taking advantage of what we have learned from this little exercise around Kerbin, let's take this craft to Joule. Normally, a mission to get to a reasonable orbit around Joule, meaning not just barely capturing, around Joule, would cost almost 3,300 meters per second of delta V, starting from a similar orbit to ours. We will see if we can do a little better than that. You can see my arrow braking tutorial to see another way to get into orbit around Joule. I will let you see all the maneuvers I set up for this mission. First, we time warp to a Joule transfer window. That is when Joule is about 96 degrees ahead of Kerbin. In this video, you can see that I used the mod Kerbal Alarm Clock to drop us out of time warp at the relevant times. It, by the way, it's a great mod and I'd recommend it if you don't have it. I'm trying to eject from Kerbin so that I am ejecting prograde to its orbit and you can see I'm looking at the lines there just to make sure that my ejection line is tangent to Kerbin's orbit line around the Sun. It just will make sure we have an efficient ejection. And I, I play with this a lot, so that's why you can see what I'm doing. Uh, just trying to get an efficient ejection burn. Once we eject from Kerbin, we'll need to set up a few more maneuvers just to make sure we set up our encounter with Joule the way I want to. As we burn out, I'm going to back up and then I'm going to focus on Joule just to see exactly how we encounter the planet. You'll notice this too that once we start burning out this far, just a little bit of acceleration has a big effect on an orbit this far out. So I will slow my burn down, and there we go. Now we're approaching Joule from the south side, so I set up a second maneuver here, about halfway to Joule, and I'm trying to get our orbit to be coplanar with the moons of Joule. At first, I set Tylo as our target. I'm trying to get an encounter with this large moon. It has a lot of gravity and no atmosphere, so it is typically the best moon to use. Unfortunately, I'm unable to find a suitable encounter with it. But the next best option is Lathe. Lathe is still a fairly massive moon, but we have to be careful to keep our closest approach above its 50 kilometer high atmosphere. Its atmosphere gets thick pretty quickly and our little craft is not designed for aero capture. Remembering what we have learned from our interactions around Kerbin, we want to pass in front of Lathe so that it will slow our orbit down relative to Joule. Getting an encounter with Lathe is enough at first, and we can make a small adjustment once we are inside of Joule's sphere of influence, which is what I am doing here. And we're gonna have, this is a very tiny burn, so what I'm gonna do then is going to lower the output of our engines so that we don't accidentally overburn, and we'll just be as exact and precise as possible for this. Time warp to our burn, and then we will make it. Now, this should be sufficient. This will get us into 
orbit, but once we are in orbit around Joule, we can further refine our orbit by how we pass in front of the different moons. Now remember, I said it was going to take about 3,300 meters per second of delta V to get into orbit around Joule. Looking at our final totals here, it looks like it took us 1,900... Sorry, it looks like... Yeah, we lose 1,951 meters per second of delta V to get into this orbit. That was a savings of over 1,000 meters per second. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me to discuss Gravity Assists. If you have any recommendations for future videos, I'm always welcome to suggestions. I will see you next time.